great. Now, instead of doing all this, since we already have an order ID, we're already doing this from the outside. We might as well. Uh, actually, we can do it from here. Hmm. So we did have uh, this thing happening here where it actually reads from the database and gets us the order number. So we didn't need the other thing at all. The only difference is here, we were not using the order number for this section right here. Okay, so no big deal. We can revert to this, no worries. So what I will do is just move this a little bit higher. So let me move this to here, like so. Okay, so we have an order ID here. And instead of having it here, I will move this down to after this point. Okay, so order ID is equal to order ID. Let me paste that there. Great. So now that we have one more item in here, uh, it's all good. This will be used there as well. Now, maybe for consistency, we can just remove the underscore there. That's okay because we have something similar on another table. And then we will add this here and say order underscore ID. Oops, just order ID like that, comma. And then let's do the same thing here before the user URL. We're going to put full colon order ID comma. Righty then. Now, this won't just be a number. It will be sort of like a description. So instead of just adding the number like this, I'm just going to add some text and say order. And then I will put... Um, now, this is entirely up to you how you want to do this. Uh, you can put that and put a space and then concatenate the number. So keep in mind, this is just a number. So it will be order number, maybe something like that. So just for something to be more descriptive to the user if they see this. So maybe you can say order number and then space and then you put uh, the number there but you can leave it at order one, order two, order three, etc., etc., like that. But this will be our link and the price. So two things, the price and the order number are the things we're going to use for comparison because we have to be sure that it's the same order number that somebody paid for. And the second thing is that the total that they paid for should match what the order is on the other, uh, what the total order is in the orders table, then we will be satisfied that they actually paid in full. Because people can manipulate URLs and then it will show that they actually paid when they paid less than they're supposed to pay. All right, so that is good, that is good. So now what we need to do is go to our table and create this, uh, because this table is the orders table and this is where we are saving right into orders very good so let's add one more item here and we're going to call it the let's add it just after user URL here so I'm going to select add one after user URL go and this one is going to be order ID like that. So you can say order ID or description. That's entirely up to you. You can call it the description. Maybe that's what we should do uh, to make things easier. Maybe. Let's try description since we don't actually have that here. Description like this. Variable character. Let's put that at maybe 20 characters that should do and hit save. So back to the structure. Still loading, is it? Structure. Okay, so description. And then let's put an index there because we will be using this to search. 
Okay, very good. So back here, let's change this to description. Sorry about the change, but uh, maybe it makes more sense instead of ID. All right, something like that. Okay, great. So let's give it one more shot and then we can see what will happen. So back here and let's say continue shopping. We are back to shopping and let me say add to cart. Let me go back here though. I want to refresh so that everything in that uh, session is removed. Then I go back to my shop and let me add another item here to buy. Let's see here, uh, maybe this $20 item, check out. So the text is clear here, which is good. Let's add a few items here. I don't know, let's put uh, a few items that look valid. Um, anything there some more notes some more notes and next okay so there we go we have everything good and then let's click pay select a payment method below paypal of course and yep let the internet load so sign up or login to pay now we wait for the interface to show up to finalize the payment. Okay, so slow internet uh, strikes again. Yeah. Now let me give it a second here. There we go. So the button is here. It's a good thing the button starts. Pay now. Let's see what's going on. Processing, processing, processing. Thank you for shopping with us. Your order was successful. Nice, isn't it? So let's go now and check it out. Let's see what we have in the orders table. So at least now we do have an order number, which is order eight, surprisingly. Should it not be order number nine or something? It was eight, but we should have added a one there, not. Hmm. So let me see what's going on here. Uh, so the order ID is here, order ID, order ID. Oh, this is my bad, you know. I'm supposed to add a one over here. So let's see what actually happens here. This is ID number nine. And if I go to order details here, what happens? What's going on? So it's writing number eight, which is actually wrong. It's supposed to be number nine. So let's put a plus one over here and let's try again. So back here. Now keep in mind that we've eliminated this one here. This, um, where is this? Where is that order ID that we are adding to the we are using to extend where is that this one right here so we don't really need this anymore and that function so we can eliminate that that's okay so back here let's try one more time continue shopping let's back again to the $20 item let's add some random values here random values random values Okay, nothing special. Next, confirm, yes, pay. Let's select a payment. Let's pay. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, almost there. Pay now. Now, at this point, when this is happening, uh, the redirect, uh, the information has already has already been saved in the database so let's browse it should be 10 okay there we go so we get a 10 that's correct now because if we go to the orders we will see that the order id is 10 and we have order 10 here which is nice 
So since these are actually matching here, this is simply a backup here uh, to this number, just in case. So you can either use this to find your order number, or you can use that. That's entirely up to you. But we just need the order number and then the order amount total here in order to compare what comes uh, with PayPal. But this order number 10 will be sent with PayPal uh, as the description. So when it comes back, it will say exactly this. So we just come to the uh, table here and search for that and then search for the actual total amount. Then we know that that item was actually paid for. All right, so, so far so good. Everything is running well. Uh, we just need to insert in the payments here it's not updating here in the payments because we are not online because PayPal cannot update my local host. I have to be on an online server for this to auto update. So we're going to transfer this to the online version and see if it will update everything correctly. So I'll see you in the next.